Archbishop Dr. Dominique Bierman has traveled the world for over three decades, proclaiming the gospel made in Zion to the nations. She exposes the false doctrines of replacement theology and preaches restoration to the Jewish roots. Now join Archbishop Dominica in the latest Bible School on Wheels, exploring the entire land of Israel. If in Genesis 11, when they were building the Tower of Babel, and they were saying, let us make for ourselves a city. Let us build with bricks and mortar so that we may reach up to the heavens together. And they were so committed, so devout, and they had the same language and such an amazing alliance of a unity that they covenanted together to build that tower and that Elohim himself had to leave his third heaven's throne. The kings only get up from their throne and go personally to see what's going on when it's something absolutely terrible that could devastate, that could destroy the kingdom. So Genesis 11, which is the building of Babel, the city of Babel, Genesis 11, was such a devastating act that could have caused an overturning of what happened in Revelation 12, where it says that Satan rebelled against Elohim, and Elohim threw him down from heaven, together with a third of the angels that followed him, Revelation 12, threw him down from heaven, together with a third of the angels that were following him, because of their insurrection, there was no place in heaven for them anymore. Because really, Yahweh is not going to spend eternity with the rebellious angels or rebellious people. Say with me, rebellious angels or rebellious people. That's a simple fact. And here in Genesis 11, though, because you see Revelation 12, it's describing something that happened before. Genesis 11. We know that Revelation 12 had happened before Genesis 3. How do we know that it happened before Genesis 3? Because in Genesis 3 we see there was a snake in the garden. And you remember that that snake came to speak to the woman. The man was listening as well, agreeing. And they both broke the covenant, broke the commandment of Elohim eight of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they died spiritually. So we know there was a snake in the garden. Can you say with me there was a snake, was a snake. In, the garden. in the garden? It had happened before Genesis 3. I believe it happened before Genesis 1. Because in Genesis 1, the earth was tohu vavohu. Anybody that has been through GRM, you know what tohu vavo is. What is tohu vavo? Chaos. chaos. It was, the earth was chaos. Now let me tell you something that I know about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The creator of the universe does not create chaos. When he creates something, it's harmonious. Take a look at the mountains. Take a look at the sea. Take a look at the flowers. Take a look at our bodies and the cells and how they operate. Anything that gets out of harmony becomes sick. That's the reason why strife is so detrimental. Because strife is being out of harmony with the Creator, let's say, or with each other. When we are in strife, we are out of harmony and it brings in sickness. That's the reason why Elohim now speaks to us even in Hebrews chapter 12, and it says that we shouldn't be like Esau. He was in out of harmony with his covenant, out of harmony with him being the firstborn. He was in out of harmony with his purposes. And so he became bitter. When you are out of harmony, you become bitter. 
your harmony doesn't depend on how other people are. You know, many people make it contingent of how are other people towards them to decide what kind of thing, attitude, we are going to have inside. I'm not depending on how you are for my own harmony. Anybody that knows what I've gone through the last month know that I'm not lying. I'm not pretending. No. What I went through the last month is enough to bring anybody out of harmony and maybe forever. But I'm in harmony. I'm in harmony enough to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through me so that he can speak to all of you. I'm in harmony enough so that this tour and conference can be in order. I'm in harmony enough so that things are done according to Yahweh's prescription, so that there is shalom upon us. Being the leader of this particular group and conference and organization, but my harmony doesn't depend on circumstances. My harmony and yours should not be depending on other people either. Your harmony is a choice. Beloved ones, and it's a choice that when you are in that harmony, you will not then enter into strife with the Almighty. When you are in harmony with the Almighty and do your best to be in harmony with humankind, your best without breaking covenant with Yahweh. I'm going to say it again. Your best without breaking covenant with Yahweh. Can I say it one more time? Can you repeat it with me? Your best without breaking covenant with Yahweh. Just like when Yeshua said, who is my mother? Who is my sisters? Who is my brother? What was he saying? He was saying, I'm first in covenant with my father in heaven. And therefore, I'm not going to take myself outside of the parameters of yes will and then as much as he permits me I will be in harmony with you but there is no harmony between righteousness and ungodliness there is never going to be harmony between unrighteousness and wickedness there is no harmony between light and dark. There's no harmony. The moment that it's dark, you bring in a light and dark is gone. That's why I'm telling you that this woman is funny this way. Remember, I left you somewhere and I said, what do you mean I'm funny this way? I'm funny this way because when I see darkness and I see wickedness and I see tremendous amount of sin in this world and I see agendas that are so wicked like ISIS or Hitler succeeding actually at least succeeding for a time, but succeeding enough to bring a tremendous amount of devastation. I'm saying to myself, mm, if that's so, then light is stronger than darkness. But the devil is always trying to make us believe that darkness is stronger than light. And therefore, somewhere, darkness is trying to blind us to see the light. Now that's funny because darkness is dark and it cannot blind you. The only thing that can blind you is too much light. And yet there is something in that wicked darkness that causes people to be so blinded that they become deceived to be in harmony with a wicked agenda instead of Yahweh's agenda. Something in that darkness is somewhere supernaturally, wickedly blinding. Are you with me? Yes. Are we getting to get some revelation here? Yes. Mm. But I, I'm, I'm, you know, as much as I'm spiritual and I see things spiritual and I walk connected to the Holy Spirit, so help me, yeah, because I cannot live if I'm not connected with the Holy Spirit. That's how I was born again and that's how I'm going to live for eternity by choice, on purpose. If you read my Shabbat letter, it's called Davka. And my Shabbat letter this week, Davka. If you walk in faith, Davka, on purpose. You walk in love, dafka, on purpose. You're going to obey Yahweh, dafka, on purpose. You are going to do the right thing, 
Dafka on purpose. You're going to forgive Dafka on purpose. You're going to give according to Yahweh's will. Dafka on purpose. Yes, eh? Dafka, Dafka, Dafka. Say with me, Dafka, Dafka, Dafka. Let that word. And any time that you see the devil is trying to make you falter in the will of Yah, you say, Dafka, I'm obeying him. Any time that he's sending you a curveball your way, you say, Dafka, I'm continuing forward. Any time that he comes and he tries to make you fall, you get right back up again. Get right with him and say, Dafka, I'm going to obey him some more. Any time that he's trying to make you hate, well, I do hate. I told me Bambi Pambi wishy washy. I hate the devil with a passion. I hate wickedness and godliness and unrighteousness with a total passion. I hate lukewarmth and compromise with a passion. I really do hate it. I feel it like pain in my heart when I detect compromise. Well, I'm also a prophet, and as prophets, you know, we, we get these feelings of things that other people don't get. And so I do hate. Don't take me wrong. I hate. King David said, I hate those who hate you. That's what King David said. I hate those who hate you. Now, I don't hate people. I don't help hate people because in John 3.16 he says, For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And since he so loved the world, I put myself in alliance with him. And we're going to again speak very much about covenant and alliance. No, notice that I'm using intertwined covenant and alliance, but they are two different things. And we're going to discover what they are. But I'm making, I'm putting myself in alliance with him and with that scripture that says that he so loved the world. And therefore, I choose to love the world like he does, but I still hate wickedness. That's how we are supposed to walk, in alliance with him, loving what he loves, hating what he hates. Amen? What a wonderful tour this has been. The Bible has truly come alive. Truly, there is no other tour like this tour. Speaking about Israel is one thing. Seeing is believing. Traveling from the north down to the south, east and west, it's amazing. The land is speaking to you. It comes alive. There's no other tour like this tour. I know there have been many other tours, but Archbishop's tour, it's amazing. You will come, you will see first-hand experience. You will live, you will see how the Israelites lived, how they walked and how they carried the Torah and the Torah that we are seeing right now. That's blessing many nations. So, I'm here, I'm excited. I want to go back to Papua New Guinea. I want to tell all the youths all my country, everybody must come for this tour. And now back to Bible School on Wheels with Archbishop Dominica Bierman. So when I'm saying I'm funny like this, it's because I look at the darkness and I look at the wickedness and I look at the success this darkness and wickedness has. And I'm not going to go too far because I mean, uh, we even can talk about the horrendous wickedness of the agenda of the United Nations against Israel. Yeah, that's, that's a big time wickedness. That's not just something light wickedness. That is an affront to the living Yahweh and its eternal covenant with these people of Israel that of this well-being, of this covenant, of the return of the Jewish people to the land, of the Jewish people being restored completely also to the God of the land, of this covenant, all the well-being of the nations depends. And therefore the wicked agenda of the United Nations that has brought Israel to the brink of a national suicide that is not a light thing, that is a wicked thing, not it any less right. wicked than Genesis 11 that caused Elohim to rise from his throne. I know I'm going to make you work. To rise from his throne and to come down from his holy heavens. And notice that he came down, it was the father and the son that came down together. Because he said, and they said to each other, let us go down. The father said to the son, pre-incarnate Yeshua. 
He said to the son, let us go down together because men have bonded together. They have covenanted together. And now nothing shall be impossible for them. Why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? Beloved ones, again, I'm funny that way. I'm saying, if Elohim himself could rise up from his holy throne, because he saw this that they were doing in build, building the Tower of Babel because they had a common language, to reach up Elohim with their own efforts, to build up their own religious system. And he said that because they've covenanted together, they bonded together, they joined together, nothing will be impossible for them. And therefore, this was an affront to his kingdom. If nothing would be impossible for them, that gathers that they could have reached heaven with their own efforts and dethroned the Almighty? I know, I know, I know. I'm going to get out a little bit. I'm going to move. I need to move. Does that mean that they could have reached heaven? Took over the throne of the third heavens and dethroned the Almighty. Well, he said, nothing shall be impossible for them. I'm not Elohim. I'm just reading the word. Mm, right. The word to me says nothing shall be impossible for them. And therefore that demanded an action. And it demanded the action of Elohim. Get up from his holy throne and go personally down to destroy that work. Because nothing would have been impossible for them. In other words, this situation in Genesis 11 of building bubble would have overturned what happened prior to Genesis 1 when Elohim dethroned Satan that was the covering cherub. Lucifer, the most important angel of heaven, the worshiper. The covering, he was the covering cherub over the throne of Elohim. Did you hear what I just told you? Covering over the throne. You cannot have any more glory than that. And because he rebelled, he was thrown down together with a third of his angels because there was no more place in heaven for them. And in Genesis 11, they were trying to enthrone Lucifer back again in the third heaven and reverse what had happened prior. Wow. Are you getting some revelation yes. here? Yes. And he said, nothing shall be impossible for them. You know, that sentence itself carries so much weight. I don't believe that we really know what we are capable of doing. I don't believe that we really understand how Elohim really created us to be. I really don't believe we do. Because then we would understand that he created us in his image and likeness. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. In the image and likeness of Elohim created he them. Male and female created he them. So both men and women, can you say men and women? Men and women. We are created in the image and likeness of the creator of mankind. Now, now, now the image and the likeness of the creator, we can only see it in Yeshua. We cannot see him. We can't see the father, but we can't see the son. And that's why the son said, look at me. When you see me, you have seen the Father. Look at me. And then it goes on to say, walk even as he walked. So if we want to know what we are capable of, we need to look at Yeshua. Yes? Because Yeshua never walked on this earth as a God. 
Yeshua walked on this earth as a Jewish man. The only difference is that he was without sin. But he's a Jewish man. Let me even take you further than that. The Holy Scriptures tell us that he's the last Adam. The last Adam. He's not the last God. He's the last Adam. It takes that he took off his divinity. Took it off means took it off. To become a man and be born just like any other boy who was born in Israel at the time. Be born in the first day of Sukkot most probably. Circumcised on Simchat Torah or Hoshana Rabbah which is the eighth day which is a holy convocation. That's why this feast is such a meaningful feast and why it will be actually celebrated during the millennial reign when nations are going to come. Zechariah 14, hallelujah, verse 16, and it says that the nation that will not come to worship the king of kings in Jerusalem will have no rain, no rain, no food, famine, no provision, destruction. And so here we see that he's born, Yeshua is born as a Jewish man, walks as a Jewish man. He goes around doing what all the Jewish men were doing at that time. And as a Jewish man, but not just a Jewish man, as a covenanted Amen. Jewish man. Hallelujah. Please say with me, covenanted. Jewish man. I have read The Sheep Nation as written by Archbishop Dominica when I was studying my GRM. There is a chapter called Key of Abraham. When I'm praying for Hong Kong, I use this Key of Abraham to pray for Hong Kong protests. In addition, I also prayed for the church, for Tachuva, as judgment is coming. And this book, I strongly recommend when uh, Matthew 25 said, the nations will be divided into sheep nation and goat nations. I strongly recommend to read this book. That is the word that makes the difference in every relationship and in every task that we need to do if we are to be effective. I can be a Jewish woman and you are following this Jewish woman and learning from this Jewish woman, taking my Bible classes, reading my books and following me all the way to Israel, inviting me to your nations calling me Ima, which means mother in Hebrew, or Archbishop, and recognizing me as your spiritual mother, your authority, or you can be reading the books and all these teachings and listening to the voice of a covenanted Jewish woman. There is a difference between following a Jewish woman or following a covenanted Jewish woman. Are you with me what I'm telling you here? Amen. There is a difference when Yeshua was walking on the earth. And, and let me tell you some people, there is a very big difference between idolatry and between submission to the earthly authorities that Yahweh puts on this earth. When you are submitted to earthly authorities that are supposed to mentor you and pastor you and assist you and raise you up in the faith, that is a godly thing to do. Not only godly, that's going back to the roots. Because without the order of the kingdom, without having people that we can allow them to mother and father us in the spirit, that we can allow them to mentor us, to bring us to what we are supposed to be. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, because remember I started with the word family, mishpacha, right? That's a family. In a family there's fathers, there's mothers, there's sisters, there's brothers, there's sons, there's daughters. And Yahweh looks at us as a family. And in this family we need to recognize who are the mothers, who are the fathers, who are the sisters, who are the brothers, who are the sons, who are the daughters. And it's very important that we would recognize that. 
because everything needs to be in harmony because Elohim creates everything in harmony and so when we walk in his order there is harmony there is shalom in the house amen there is shalom in the family there's no strife in the family but what I'm coming back to what I'm telling you because this is about Ruth and Naomi I'm not dealing with two angels like angel Gabriel and angel Michael I'm not talking about two angelic beings. I'm not talking about two spirit beings. I'm not talking about an alliance between Jupiter and Elohim. I'm not talking about an alliance that is only up there in the third heavens alliance. I'm talking about a covenant and an alliance. And we're going to talk again about the difference between the two. Remember, I mentioned a few words. I mentioned covenant. I mentioned alliance. I mentioned bond. I mentioned a few different words. And in Hebrew, I mentioned the word brit. Brit, covenant. And I told you that uh, in some cases, not all of them, but most cases, brit has, is connected with cutting and blood shedding. But not always. And so... Ruth and Naomi were two women, flesh and blood women. The covenant that Ruth made with Naomi was with a flesh and blood woman. So, now again, I'm going to go back to what I said before. What I said before, there's a big difference between you following a Jewish woman or a Jewish man than following a Jewish covenanted woman or a Jewish covenanted man. Huge difference. What's the difference? The difference is, number one, that that Jewish covenanted man or woman has a covenant with the Almighty. And that covenant, when we understand what covenant really means, it's totally binding in the life of that person. It's totally binding. Number two, a Jewish covenanted woman, because is bound to the Almighty, and because it's covenanted with the Almighty, therefore, it will bring down that covenant to the other ones as well. And so it's a conduit. It's simply a vessel. You know, Kadesh Map Ministries, which is the mother of the United Nations for Israel as a ministry, it's called Kadesh Map Ministries. You know what it means? Kad is vessel, Esh is fire, and then Map means messianic, apostolic, prophetic, and ministries is ministries. In other words, not only one ministry, but many ministries. Okay. So Kad Esh means vessel of fire, a vessel of revival, based on 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Do not quench the spirit fire. If you enjoyed today's program, we'd love to hear from you. Please send your comments, requests, or donations to kad-esh.org or mail to Kadesh Map Ministries, 52 Tuscan Way, Suite 202-412, St. Augustine, Florida, 32092, USA. Have a blessed week and join us again for the next Bible School on Wheels. Shalom.